Mr. Rich? Present. Mr. Venable? Present. Mr. Buckner? Present. Mr. McBride? Present. Thank you. Lord God in heaven, we are blessed to, to live in this county. What a beautiful county you've given us to live in and wonderful people to work with and work for. So we're thankful for those blessings. But God, right now, you know that there's, our hearts are heavy because of the virus that has spread amongst our community and um, people have lost their lives. People are in the hospital. So God, we just pray that you'll be with those that are sick. Pray that you'll give them um, healing. Pray that you will be with their families and give them peace and comfort as they go through these difficult times. So God, just breathe with our community. Watch over us, save us and guide us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. This is the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. December 22nd uh, special call meeting before we hear from Sarah. Um, in that meeting, the commission accepted a letter of resignation uh, from Mr. Guthrie. And to clear things up, you know, Mr. Guthrie's letter was and is a public document. So therefore, the commission didn't see wrongfully, didn't see the need in going through all the details of that letter. But our failure to do that, and the courthouse being closed for several days after that, and no one being able to um, request public uh, document request, uh, allowed time for several things to happen. Uh, since that time, the, the governor, and rightfully so, the governor's office released the letter, and uh, Mr. Guthrie has made a, uh, a public statement as well. Um, this time, those events, uh, allowed a lot of rumors to get started and speculation and uh, I just wanted to clear up the commission wasn't trying to hide anything it was not our intent to hide anything that letter is a public document and should be shared with the public uh, but some of those rumors and speculation uh, you know Mr. Guthy addressed some of those in his statement and uh, you know it was Mr. Guffey's choosing of what time he resigned. And he chose the date of uh, April the 11th. And the commission, I think, rightfully so, uh, accepted that letter of resignation. Um, there is a, an investigation in, in Mr. Guffey's comments to the public. Uh, he referenced that um, investigation. Uh, some of the rumors and speculation, you know, uh, heard everything from he should have been fired, the commission should have removed him, several different things. Uh, and I just wanted to go over that process and explain that process. Uh, if such a process is warranted and needed, uh, the only way a government official or elected official can be removed is through high crimes and misdemeanors, impeachment. Uh, that has to go to a grand jury, which our next grand jury is February ish. Uh, uh, as far as I know, there's been no criminal charges of anything. There is an investigation. It may or may not warrant a uh, criminal charge. And if, if you're charged, you're not convicted until you go through trial. So it would take, you know, a charge, a conviction, to get it into grand jury. Don't think a charge and conviction would take place before the next grand jury. No. So you would be, when would be the next grand jury? Sometime spring? Sometime after that. The grand juries, unfortunately, have been pretty well stalled because of COVID. They've been canceled several times. The Sheriff's Department knows this. It's just hard to get anything for the grand jury right now because of that. Because all jury trials have been canceled for a while. Uh, so it would, it would be a number of months. I don't know when. Exactly. So that... And then once it went to a grand jury, the grand jury, if they found grounds for impeachment, they moved to trial. So right. it would have to be put on a, a docket for a judge yep. to, to hear it in a trial. 
or actually a jury to hear it, you know, or a jury to hear it by trial. So, you know, regardless of what, you know, if, if all that had to take place to get Mr. Duffy, you know, out of office, if such things were warranted, then it would have took way longer than the amount of time that, that he requested for his to be his final day. And I think this commission was trying to act in the best financial interest of the county and to give us the ability to function without such things going on. And I think Mr. Guffey, you know, not being here during that will make it a lot easier and better for us to be able to function. I just wanted to clear that stuff up. I apologize. Um, on my behalf, I wanted to read the statement. I got in trouble for having a, a statement ready to read. I should have just spoke uh, like I am now. But, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Move on to the meeting. Uh, Ms. Sarah from uh, Chamber of Commerce has uh, something she wants to go over with. That's a tough follow-up, but if it's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> you haven't followed that. Uh, but, but. If I could just take my mask off so you guys can yeah, hear me
expenditures coming in for people visiting, save families $537 a year on their taxes. Um, and we've grown 280% since 2001. And that's, that's not lodging tax, it's tourism expenditures, so the money that's spent in Jackson County. And these numbers all come from the state tourism office, so it comes directly from, they're the ones that collect the taxes and, and maintain who's making what. So in the report that you have in your folder, the economic snapshot, that's the state report where all these numbers come from. So 2020 accomplishments. Um, I'm always working to understand our target market better, and that's actually the proposal that I'll discuss. Uh, that's what that looks at even deeper, and the gentleman, uh, Neville Bada, who owns the company, who has worked with every major tourism partner in the Southeast. Um, I've thoroughly vetted him, <laughs> and uh, I'm excited for what he can do as far as getting deeper in the minds of the target audience of the people who visit here. Um, we produce 20 videos. I know I try to keep everyone up to date and send, sending the links when I get them on YouTube. Um, if you haven't seen them all and want to see them, um, I, um, I'm happy to share them with you. So, not sure if you're aware, but uh, Governor Ivey awarded $10 million to the State Tourism Office specifically for COVID recovery, uh, a major promotion campaign, basically. And what they did um, to keep the tourism office clean is they sent the $10 million directly to the ad agency who the state tourism office has been working with for, I think, over 10 years now. And what they did was they reached out to every single tourism director across the state and asked everyone to submit three um, of their major attractions. And that was their idea, uh, which I think is a good one, to keep everything even. So Huntsville got to submit three attractions. We got to submit three attractions. So regardless of the size of the community, we all got to submit three. I submitted Unplanned Baggage, Scottsboro Boys Museum, and uh, Russell Cave. And so they're part of this $10 million uh, ad campaign that is currently running. It did have to be spent by the end of 2021, so it was just all put into ads, but they will continue to run through, I'm sorry, the end of 20 had to be spent, and it will continue to run into 2021. So that's going on right now. Uh, we had uh, roughly a $100,000 in earned media, which basically means because the partners that I have with our media, we've had $100,000 worth of free stories, whether it be on the news, on the radio, local magazines, regional magazines, that kind of thing. Um, the last one here worked with Danny's Byways. So that is a road biking company. Um, the road biking sport is huge. The folks that <laughs> If you are familiar with that, the folks that ride road bikes, they have like multiple computers on their bikes and they compete against each other in a computer program. Um, so we actually pay the gentleman a ridiculously low amount in my opinion. We paid him $2,000 and he created four different road bike tours um, using some of his analytics and programming that he already um, noticed were popular. So there's four right now in Jackson County. Um, here I have Bridgeport Stevenson section of Scottsboro, but the the um, paths are some are like 16 miles, 21 miles, so they do span a good bit. And as part of that, he put like where to eat, um, where to stop. So it's it's a really it's it's a really good break into that industry because um, a lot of the people in Tennessee follow him and follow his site. We're actually the first community in Alabama to be part of this program. So 2021, um, if we can do this strategy together, that would be my top goal of 2021. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> um, I started working last year and AJ came to the last meeting of 2020 um, working with Unclaimed Baggage Center and our local hotels to develop the, the Jackson County Hospitality Association. And the purpose of that is the hotels are the ones that pay us for lodging taxes. And we really had no communication with them, very poor relationship with them. Um, they're our biggest stakeholders. So if ever in time we want to go up on the surcharge, which pretty much everyone around us is at $3, but we're at holding at $1, or if we ever decide we want to go up on lodging tax in any way, we need to have a really good relationship with them so that they don't fight back against us. Um, and that's what the Hospitality Association
administration has done, and I'm happy with the 2020 results because we're in such a good relationship with the hotels now. I've already suggested it, just like, hey, Gunnersville's at 30, what do you think of this? They're so happy with the fishing tournaments coming in, they, they didn't bat an eye. So I'm just trying to, uh, I guess, um, go ahead and prepare, right, for, for what could possibly come. And that's why I'm excited to be here today because um, I've never had a relationship with the commission before, even though I've only been here a year from the onboarding I've got, gotten from the tourism community in the state. This is a vitally important relationship. And so I was really excited that he wanted to meet initially, Mr. Barnes wanted to meet, um, because there's a lot of potential that I can help with. Um, I actually believe, believe strongly that I work for this county, just as you do, and I'm happy to figure out how we can do that. Um, a couple of other things I just kind of wanted to, I don't even know how to have this conversation. The Land Trust of North Alabama, I don't know if you're familiar with them. So I recently, I started joining these organizations on behalf of the chamber and just kept making a relationship with them and seeing like, why isn't there a land trust in Jackson County? If you look at their website, they're everywhere except for Jackson County. So I think in November, I sat down with one of their employees and we had a great conversation and she just put it to me plainly. She said, there's not a relationship because the door's never been open. But we have been looking at Jackson County for quite a long time. We want to help preserve. We see that that's where the growth is going. We want to do what we can. Um, and I said, well, it would make me really, really happy if you had a land trust in Jackson County. And they, she said they actually recently um, bought some land on the Scottsboro side of where the new, it's like digging into the ground on the, on the left there, on the way to Huntsville, in Paint Rock. Uh, the quarry, is it the yep. new quarry? Mm -hmm. So they bought the Scottsboro side of the mountain. Um, and the land trust is going in there. So I said, well, what can I do to help? And she said, we need help from the county for manpower, for, I guess, road access. They have to buy all this tubing and whatever, I don't know. She said, we buy all the materials. We would like to have help from the county for um, the work portion to build the road. So um, that's one of the things I wanted to, to ask you guys about. I don't know how I would do that other than sharing that with you. But to me, that's a very important relationship because they want multiple land trusts to be here. Set up a meeting and Mr. Campbell, I'm sure, would be happy to attend and meet one of the commissioners and myself. With a representative of the land trust. Okay. Just a couple of words we're talking about. Okay. Sure. I can, I can do that. Um, and then finally, I do not have a this for you, um, but this is, this I'm going to leave, I don't have a copy in your packet. Um, this is the proposal, so for the strategy, um, for the county, initially it came to me with the county park, but I think I also mentioned that meeting, my goal was to create a strategy for all of Jackson County. So I went to him with both of those, I said what would it look like if we developed um, a countywide tourism strategy that had a focus on the park. And so this, this uh, proposal does just that. And the purpose of this um, would be for him to come in and basically survey the area. So he would talk to area stakeholders, he talks to visitors. Um, it's pretty extensive what he does. And at the end of it, he develops a three to five year strategy and because of COVID, um, I've asked him to focus more on the three year because we don't even know what's gonna happen next month. Um, and so what this 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 costs um, with a discount $25,000 to have him come in and do this. And at the end of it, um, I'm gonna bring this up to you if that's okay. This one is the strategy. The one that's kind of it out that way. That is a feasibility study because when I talked to him, it wasn't clear 100% if you wanted a feasibility study like you add a hotel. 
County currently receives zero sales tax, and as far as the county, um, our general fund receives zero uh, lodging tax. And, and so, what about and, duplicating and, the park? Um, what about duplicating the park? The, the park, we, we do, right. so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ideas. I mean, I would be willing if we gave up part of our property tax or whatever to get part of sales tax. I mean, we've had these discussions with delegation and hopefully we can have some more discussions in the future and maybe we can be involved in those discussions. And I just see duplicating a park as like, if that's so profitable, I think you and I have talked about that in the past, um, an easy return with the amount of people who would be coming to Scottsboro to do, or Jackson County and then leaving to stay. I think what you're talking about is making another destination for campers. Yeah. Yeah. Closer closer to Skyline. And well, you know, Cathedral like Caverns is working on their, they already broke ground on their um, campground. Did what now? Uh, Cathedral Caverns just broke yeah. down their, yeah. But I think they want us to do most of the work and, and then take all the money. So I think that's what it really down to. So the campground portion is not in Jackson County, it's in Marshall County? I'm not we need to go to our mayor out there. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk to the state about right. possibly doing something up to high top right. Right. Yeah. if they want to put the money over there, kind of got from a sharing point to uh, all of them kind of thing. And yeah. we'll draw to it. But, uh, well, if you can look over that proposal, um, you've got me to do the work. What is the the one dollar surcharge? What is that money used for? Dollar a day. Um, what it, what is it used for? It goes direct. It comes directly to the chamber as part of our overall budget. So, what can it be spent on? According to 
referring to the law, it's just the general tourism development. So it could be invested. So it can be invested. Um, it's spent on um, advertisement. advertisement. It's spent on salary. Um, yeah. So if there was an increase in it, Charge them, and also at camp, camping and, and and catering, we can charge them a dollar a night per night up to thirty days. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Okay. Sarah, and listen, you may have said anything. We, we appreciate you coming. Uh, you give us a lot to think about and to study, and you know maybe we can zero in on some of these topics and. project but that as you recall is hot mix asphalt resurfacing project the other remaining three three nine are chip cell resurfacing local road resurfacing basically so the uh, project number one and number two are not complete number two is in progress uh, but not complete and then the remainder of the local road resurfacing has been completed with exception of county road 350 you can see how the funding works out there on the right as far as what's been spent and what's remaining to be spent. And I'll answer any questions that, that I may for you. Just so we're clear, this is not deciding to spend any money or what road. This, this is what we've done in the last year with the Alabama rebuild money. So it's just an accounting, just a, a requirement from the state that, that we pass it. Yes, sir. Correct. I'll take a motion that we uh, 
vote on this. Yeah, I make a motion we approve the fiscal year 2020 County Rebuild Alabama Annual Report. Uh, motion I'll by Mr. Second. Buckner, second by I'll second. Mr. Rich. All right, all in favor? Uh, 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 all right. Uh, and next uh, item, motion to approve and pay the county's portion of the TVA investment grant. Uh, I think we have that. We discussed this in our last work session uh, where we had uh, partnered with uh, EDA to do a uh, road extension uh, at the uh, industrial park and how did KT&A, I think is what the, uh, the road extension was. Um, it ran over a little bit from um, the uh, estimate, but they're requesting that we pay this. I think we had uh, planned on it being $20,000, and it's $28,570. It would be our portion if, if we pay all of that. Take a motion to pay it like we had planned or in its entirety. Now, I will remind you that we do have uh, funds that come directly from the TVA in lieu of that go into a, uh, an account that we can only spend for economic, economic development purposes. I'll make a motion that we pay it. Second. Motion by Mr. Rich and a second by Mr. Buckner. All in favor? Uh, uh, all right, that concludes our meeting. We'll move into our work session. Uh, first thing we have is metal detector for the courthouse security. I think the courthouse security has approached Mr. Rich about the age of our current uh, equipment and we'll see about updating. Mr. Rich, you have anything? Yeah. Yeah, I was talking and conversing with Barry at the door and, and Lauren, and the age of the metal detector is getting on up there, and I figured we got to talking and it would be a good time to, to update the metal detector up the front and get, you know, get it up, get it up to date. And I just had, there's several models, and there, here's one of them here that, that they, it's got different zones, as you can see, it'll, it will light up, you know, if you have something metal in your shoe or your knees or your waist or your shoulders or whatever. And I just thought that would be a good good, good thing to go with after talking with Rocky. Just seeing what y'all, you know, see how y'all. Out of all the ones that you had priced, these are the, this is the only one that they did comply. Right. Correct. Yes, that's the one, the one mentioned that's ADA compliant. I think all of them probably are. However, that was also the cheapest model uh, that I, if I, right. if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, right now, there's basically a 20% sale on it if you get it before a certain time. And Mr. Porter, is this, um, what is our mind on the map on what we can buy equipment for without doing a competitive bid? I mean, mm -hmm. suggestion on how to move forward with this. Do we want to put it on the next meeting or do we want to have it on another work session for further discussion? I mean, uh, if this appears to meet the need, so I, I think, I mean, it seems, seems like something we should go ahead with. I agree. Uh, and it's also, what, 32 and a half inches wide versus the standard 30 inch width? Yes, sir, that's the ADA compliance. I believe it's, uh, you can get a standard wheelchair for it. Nobody has any objections, we'll add that to the next meeting. Uh, on to our next uh, item on the roof on the property of Liberty Lane. Um, that building is in desperate need of roof uh, and some repairs to the roof. Um, I, you know, Mr. Guffey had had uh, some pricing done, and one of the prices was above the minimum bid law for services and material performance, $50,000, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the 
one that was below had a price per sheet for decking to be replaced, and it most likely would have put it over that threshold. So a bid spec will have to be written. I had talked to Mr. Campbell earlier today, and he, he was nice enough to say that he would help me put that together. I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that process and, and what all has to be included on it to meet the, um, the minimum standard. So uh, I'll try to have that for the next meeting. Everybody's okay with it. Sounds good to me. All right. Next is um, the county's property at Sportsman's Landing. Uh, I think Mr. Uh, Barnes and, and Mr. Guffey, I mean, Mr. Campbell, excuse me, had, had spoke about um, our public works probably going to try to do some grading and add some gravel and try to fix the parking area and the entrance and the turnaround and stuff in, in that piece of property. Um, and we've been out, we've had COVID, a lot of issues. I think we have not had time to do it yet, have you, Mr. Campbell? That's correct. You know, we, we talked about maybe some Friday work opportunities um, so we can keep both schedules going and uh, we, we still plan to we still plan to do some of that work. If, um, if we understood, yeah. yeah, if we understood the scope properly, it's just, you know, it was over gravel. They've done a lot of work to just see what they have there, and the um, the parking area is really rough. It needs some drainage to even be able to maintain a parking area. So, just some basic work on uh, getting, you know, getting the getting the grade. Uh, drainage working properly and getting a surface and all other surface that can be be out there. Cool. I appreciate that. And, you know, we'll move forward. Now, a lot of the, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the community went over there and done <coughs> the majority of the work to get that place done today. The community has done well done the there, keeping it done clean, done keeping it uh, up, and that, I wanted to move on to some discussion about that. Um, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation on things we could do at that property. I think we even talked to Mr. Phil about that when we were with the chamber. Um, I think it would be beneficial for us to have a community meeting with the folks in that community, um, you know, to see their thoughts and ideals, and you know, instead of us just springing something on them that, that they don't want in their community, um, talk about you know the options and things that can be done down there. This doesn't have to be on the next meeting, but that piece of property has been sitting there uh, for years. It belongs to TVA. We can't build anything on the foundation, but it can have rental property. And it can have um, uh, RV sites, uh, walking trails, that type of thing. So I think it would be um, good for us to look into the potential for that property and, and talk to the community and their wishes for that property. Absolutely. Or is it that much? I didn't. Remember, I didn't remember it being that much. But uh, the majority is that if you're looking at the waters on the way up. And I know uh, TVA had uh, said that they would extend their lease time on it, depending yeah, well, on what uh, going on. If we could ever get a meeting with TVA, we could write a new contract for that to maybe put some stationary like cabins on there. Okay. But you're going to have to get with TVA in order to write a new. Mr. Vice lease. Chair. Uh, are they utilities, sewage, and everything yeah. down there? Yes. Sewage, sewage down there. Well, that, that right there is... Water. Yeah. That right there would make it easy. I think sewer, sewer goes to the end of that road before it starts. Mm -hmm. So the guys will be thinking about it. Maybe yeah. we'll add this to the next work session, and maybe at that time set a date to have a, a community meeting in by from that community yeah. and we may need to have the meeting a little later in the day or something to uh, allow them time to get here. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. All right, uh, park insurance project. We have received some funds um, for the tragedy that we've had at the park and I think there's a deadline on the time that we've got to get a project started with those funds. Maybe do you have anything on that? Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Rick, they're just wanting basically the commission to make a determination on the, whether we're going to replace not me or not at all, or if we're going to utilize that in another capital improvement for the park. So uh, basically, we just, you guys will need to be discussing what you want to do with that. But, you know, with, with our policy included, loss of income on that dock, but we've collected that loss of income for about a year now. And they're, they're wanting to know when that stops and when you plan going forward with the uh, 
and uh, they're basically just wanting to bring it in to the loss of income, you know, since it's been a year now, and then they want us to determine which direction we're going to go with the capital improvements from the insurance policy. I personally would like to just expand our campground area, and we have several on the waiting list, and with COVID, you know, that's became very popular. Uh, and I don't know if you know that. Or yeah. Uh, Carl, could you talk to us a little bit about the profitability of, of campground as far as adding a site? And, I mean, what, what would that mean? Well, we, we, we have a diagram of what it would take and the cost it would take to rebuild those on, on, the, camp, on the hill up there above the campground. I think at that time it was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. That was a projected cost by the company cost. that had right. uh, done the projected cost for the cabin. Right. I think they overshot that, but they undershot the projected cost for the cabin. Well, fifty percent right anyway. We have one hundred twenty three dollars for the camper. Okay, we have twenty five hundred thirty dollars worth of this for both. So either way you go, you're gonna make your money back. So I want to go back to the boating. That would be for pontoons, runabouts, with real sell. You'll get just as much out of them as you will, you know, what we was getting out of Vita. And you could also put some money in the camping, you know. You don't have to necessarily do it all at once, but you could do some for both areas. Mr. Barnes, could you bring us the plot and some of the stuff that you have from when we looked at it before, maybe the next work session, and when we get a conversation started about how we want to move forward with those dollars and... I don't know how many dollars you're talking about. I think that's something you can talk about. And, and for cost on a, adding campsites, that's that's grading and, and that materials and yeah. running... running Utilities. Uh, we didn't know at the time, but Scottsboro Electric, see, so owns electricity down there. They would run the uh, primary, okay, at their cost. We would just have to go in with our secondary, okay? So, you know, the way help is nowadays, you don't have to mow and you don't have to weed eat that boat slip. You know, the way help is to try to get and pay help, then you've got to weed eat and mow them campsite. But you can have some of both of them, I think. I don't mean you have to necessarily stop at that. I mean, once you get those, you know, you can, you can always add to it. How many people we got on the waiting list for campsites? 120. 120. Now, does that mean when I call those 120? Right, yeah, are they going to come? Get out of it? I yeah. don't know. Good. Uh, I'd like to have this on the next work session. No objections, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some time to uh, get some stuff together and look at some costs and uh, return on investment there. Right, uh, next item on our agenda is a vehicle usage policy. just has identifying marking. Um, this is uh, state law, which I don't think we're in full compliance of, but we as Jackson County need to have a usage policy that we pass a resolution on and, and hold to it. So I just want to bring everybody up to speed and aware that you know we're going to start writing that, working on that, and Questions you have, um, just turn them in, and uh, just maybe a month or two down the road before we have something together. But we're going to start working on that. All right. Uh, next thing we have, uh, uh, Jason. If I could comment on this uh, uh, identifying markings, you said that we we do have vehicles that aren't in compliance with that. We have some that I don't feel like in compliance with it. Um, and it is is this bound for for any any vehicle, vehicle that we own? Okay. 
is supposed to be marked. Uh, and whatever we pass needs to, at bare minimum, match this law. But, you know, some of it we need to be, go beyond what the law says for our own personal preferences. You all get to decide what it's supposed to look like. That's yeah. you got. And I know a lot of the vehicles we don't have them because we have a turnover problem. You know, we're, we're trading the vehicles out and putting that signage on them and fill out signs, you know, can damage the paint. I don't think they can be temporary. I don't think they can be magnets stuck to them. So um, we can discuss all that. We also can think about maybe putting a tag on the front and then maybe a sticker on the back of the window or something. Yeah, we put something in the glass, right. you know, that can be yes. removed and not damage the vehicle. Noticing Mr. Mr. Uh, Arnold has them on his and, and on the glass, and that's no, nothing on the paint. That's why we do it because, like he said, if you're damn, you're really right. faded spots, and if you're going to turn around and sell those every year or every other year, you don't want to damage the, the paint. Correct. So, yeah, I think you know, Eric said, I think we got them on the back glass and, mm -hmm. and, and the tag on the front. Tag on the front. Tag on the front. Anybody have anything else on that? We'll have that back on the work session in the near future. Uh, moving on, IT work order process. In a lot of some recent events, I just feel like it would be uh, um, good for us to um, start a work order process similar to what we have with maintenance and, and public works. I know when a, a uh, the taxpayer calls in with a complaint, they have a work order process fill out date, time, who called. Um, Mr. Porter, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? How we, I mean, we maybe don't need it for everything that you do, but if somebody wants to move a camera, add a camera, change out a monitor, uh, access to the cameras, uh, that type of stuff, I feel like there needs to be record of that, and the commission needs to have access to that record at all times. Yeah, I think that's the most important, <clears throat> like you said, specifying what needs recorded because i mean i had a lot i have a lot of texts hey my mouse is not working i know y'all don't care about that so right, right. we just need a line drawn of hey we need to know about this hey just take care of this okay so. well, maybe i can get with you this week or something and maybe we yes sir and maybe we'll have this on the next work session all right Next item on the agenda, um, I had a lot of concerns, talked to Chief Hernan about the, and I think he reached out to what, FBI and uh, Homeland Security looking for somebody to do a sweep on the courthouse to check and make sure that all that we have in here, we know what we've got and everything's where it's supposed to be. You've not had any luck finding anybody to do that. That is correct. Um, FBI said they couldn't do it. State said they couldn't do it. And well, Homeland Security has not called me back. Um, uh, I, I, there are probably private agencies out there. The suggestion I got was use infrared. I told them that wouldn't work. We've got so much electricity going through this office. It would light up like a candle. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be some specialized equipment that we don't have. Do you know anybody that we might could reach out to? to and, uh, I, I can do some research. But I, I didn't know that we were running into dead ends, so okay. I'll, I can look around. If you can check on that for us, and then we'll have this on the next work session. Yes, sir. Discuss it further. Uh, I know there's some concerned employees, and uh, understandably. Next thing we have is um, Mr. Rich had got a call from a um, contractor who wanted to know about taking down a tree, council on aging. Uh, I don't think any of the commission was aware. I talked to Mr. Anderson today and he said that the neighbor there was having some damage from a 
a hickory tree and dropping hickory nuts hickory on nuts, the roof and, uh, and, limb. and and limbs and there was one large dead limb yeah. uh, hanging over the lady's outbuilding. So um, that's something we're going to move forward with. Do we want to request bids for that work? Uh, it was well under the minimum bid requirement, but I still think it would be uh, uh, beneficial to us and to the taxpayer to uh, advertise for a bid on that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Basically, if, I, mean, I would hate for, I mean, it's our tree, but if anybody from the ladies' side uh, could be over there and get hurt, you know, or it, it just be, it would be property wrong. damage or whatever, it'd be best to, you know, go ahead and take care of the problem before anything. Nobody objects. I will have that on the next um, regular meeting to uh, uh, advertise for that removal of that tree. Um, that's all we have on our, our work session agenda. Mr. Venable, you got someone signed up. Oh, we had somebody signed yes, up. Yes, uh, the, sh the sheriff has signed up to speak. Who? I wasn't on the, the agenda, so I signed oh, okay. up, so I wouldn't yep. left out. Okay. <laughs> Come ahead, Sheriff. <laughs> hey, we got an unforeseen expense or detail that, that wasn't uh, known about, I guess, or should have known about it back in October when we passed the budget. But we got about a $5,800 range that needs to be replaced. Uh, the ovens hadn't worked for the past eight years, and she's been using the eyes on the top, which she's down to two now. And during Thanksgiving, I think she had some major problems. We got we got what we call a steamer that has taken the place of the ovens. Well, the steamer goes and comes too, and it broke down during while she was fixing Thanksgiving dinner. It took her 14 hours just to fix dinner for her. Uh, we got to have range, a new range. This one has two ovens, but the one that's there now was put in there in 1998. So, I mean, it just needs to be replaced. No objections. I'll ask that we put that on next work or next meeting. Um, this dawned on me, and I, I you may have to coach me through this. I apologize. It's all new to me. Uh, we moved last week's meeting to this week. Correct. Are we going to meet next week and stay on on the second and fourth Monday schedule, or are we going to wait two weeks um, and have a meeting again on our first and third Monday schedule? I'm fine with meeting next week, but I can, you know, calendar set up for it. Well, if you're not going to meet next week, then you need the, the folks change because you've already announced your regular meetings. Right? She has not. She didn't, she didn't advertise for the 11th meeting. She advertised it for the following so meeting. Had, but when this commission formed in, in November, right, right. Said second, second floor. Floor. So right. you can change that, you need to do that. Okay. Right. So we need to just go ahead and have a meeting Monday right. and stay on our schedule. Okay. I just want to bring that to everybody's attention because holidays has kind of got us all here. Mr. Vice Chair, i got a question for the Sheriff. Um, yes, sir. Is this something that we need to pretty well act on immediately? I mean, I would we, like for you to. Yeah. I mean, this thing's used three I mean, times. But if it goes out, past, you know, tonight. 1998, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know how many eyes she had before Thanksgiving, but she's down to two right now. Right. And and we need an oven pretty quick. So, I, need to, yeah, I don't think we need to wait. Yeah. Yeah, Monday. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's everything from the commission. I'm part of the head, so I'll see everything. No, sir. I would like to recognize County Works uh, employees. We had several that had, you know, were out during the Christmas break for responses on long call. We're all on call anytime, and we all know that. But you know, Christmas Eve, for example, there were a couple instances, and they were out uh, responded to those. So I just want them to know that I appreciate their response and efforts and sacrifice that they make for us all. Thank you. I actually have some good news. Uh, back last summer, EMA applied 
when he's ran a technology ramp at the Tide Foundation. Uh, the week before Christmas, we received a check for $39,000. So what we plan to do with that, I'm sure everybody in here knows the issues that we have at places like uh, the Wall of Jericho and Buck's Pocket, where we have zero communications. So our plan to, to use that money, first of all, we're going to use a little bit of it to, uh, everything's going to Webex meetings now with the state of Alabama and we are not equipped to do that in the basement. So we're going to work on that. Uh, we plan on buying some thermal imaging equipment and some satellite communications equipment for when our rescue squad and the sheriff and everybody's out looking for missing persons, that maybe we can speed that process up just a little bit. Uh, when a helicopter can't fly, fell on the ground with a fleer can, can see some heat out in the woods. So that's the kind of things we plan on spending that money for, but we're, we're proud to receive that money. Brandon, do you have anything? No, sir. Sheriff, do you have anything else? No, that's all. No. Can I ask one thing real quick? Yeah. Could, could all the department heads remind their people, we're, we're asking the citizens to wear a mask when they come in offices, and I know we're trying to be careful, but just I know sometimes we forget, I do sometimes and forget to put it on, but if you come in another, another office, please have your mask on because we've got some people that are kind of germ folks and, and I understand we've had some people recently, uh, like today, two people died uh, from COVID. So it is real, folks. People are back from here. Folks on Facebook make comments often about us not wearing masks that appears we have. Well, you're safe. We're all over six foot away and we have protective dividers between us. Or speak and understand that we don't have one. Uh, Commissioner, Mr. Rich, you have anything? Uh, I'd just like to, with all the last past events that's been going on here lately, just everybody trust in the commission. We're going to make the best decision for the people of Jackson County. Just, I just want everybody to know that. Everybody's got their own opinion, everybody's got their own suggestion to do. But if you ever sit up here in this chair up in our shoes everything's not clear cut and easy as it looks to be like just a box of you know peanuts and candy it's you got to make decisions that, that affects three or four things at once and you got to decide on who to take care of or well, I want to take care and I always want to take care of the people of Jackson County and our employees that's what I want to is my first to always do uh, I still getting calls on, reckon, you know, there's more cameras here. I got two today. I, we'll do our best to get I, I, to get the courthouse swept. Uh, I can't tell you, you know, and this will probably get speculation up. What I know right now is I know myself 100%. There's no other cameras that ain't supposed to be anywhere that, you know, in other, pro, in other places. And also, too, the rumors going around that there was a camera in the bathroom. There was not a camera in the bathroom. All right. So just want to get that out to sort of clear that part up. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Just want to say, like Jonathan, thank you to all our county employees who, you know, with this COVID, with this new ground that we're on, you know, people are out and we have to cover for one another. Everybody's done an excellent job. You know, speaking from a personal experience, uh, this COVID's real. I mean, uh, I got a taste of that in the last couple of weeks, and I'm still not 100%, but, it, you know, as far as recovering, of course, I'm cleared to be back. But uh, just follow the precautions and, and then wear your mask and, and do the right thing and, and consider everybody around you. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, wonderful turnout today. I appreciate everybody being here. And, Looking forward to the next meeting. Uh, I'll add something. I know it's been a long time. I apologize. Uh, I had an apology and an explanation the first of the meeting, and I'd like to make another. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to understand and admit when I make a mistake, and I feel like we made a mistake closing the courthouse the length of time that we did. Um, we had good intentions uh, after Thanksgiving. I think we had at one time close to 30 employees out. Uh, not all positive, but some had been exposed to other employees. 
that had got it at family gatherings. We were trying to give enough time from Christmas to we went back to work after New Year's that if any employees contracted this virus, that they would have symptoms and know it before it was time to come back to work. Um, in hindsight, we made a mistake because the crowd has been in the hallway all day long. We've added exposure um, to the citizens because they've not had time to come in and get their uh, taxes done and their um, property taxes paid and tax all and stuff like that. So uh, I apologize for that. This is uncharted territory. You know, we try to do what we think is best and, and I feel like we made a mistake for that. And I voted in favor of it, but I made a mistake. And other than that, pray for 2021 because 2020 uh, has not been a, uh, a good year in many, many ways. Uh, and that's all I've got. With that, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion in the second.